got a star, they've got shooters, and they were able to get the pace to their liking. It was 75-71. If they can keep it into 70s again, they'll have a heck of a chance tonight. Both these teams very well coached. It's going to be the Catamounts controlling the opening tip. Western Carolina in purple and Sanford in white. What are we looking for defensively in the half court out of Sanford? We'll see a lot of half court man to man. They'll double Woolbright, but they'll let everybody else play one on one. Here is Woolbright going to work, and Woolbright draws the foul. One of the top scorers in the country, in fact, fourth in the NCAA, and averaging nearly 22 and a half points per game. Justin Gray does such a good job of moving Woolbright around. You're right there out of the gate, first possession. Posted him up. The first free throw spins out of there. A 71% free throw shooter. There's Justin Gray in his third year. I want to talk about some good lineage. Played his college ball at Wake Forest with some guy by the name of Chris Paul. He wound up playing overseas for 14 teams over a 12 year span. He said, When I finally got done, we had a banquet for Thanksgiving. It's the first time I was at home in forever. Here's the first of many threes fired up by Sanford. It's an air ball from Riley Jones. Rylan Jones is one of the key players in this game as you look at Bucky. Bucky McMillan now in his fourth year and already making a lot of noise nationally as one of the better young coaches in college basketball. You see it right away, that dead ball after the missed three. Full court pressure. Cats break it, but they can't complete it. Great job of walling up that time by the big man of chore who's coming in with a sore ankle They weren't sure if he was able to go he's in white number 14 gets the ball here launches a three and it irons off And it'll get into the hands of the catamounts off and running Woolbright in transition and now Western Carolina will set it up in the half court and They're not denying Woolbright in the half court, but see he's a guy who can get the rebound He gets 12 a game and then he can initiate the break right away Here's a three from the corner from the Catamounts, knocked down by Trey Jackson, who hits him at a 38% clip. That's a great sign for the Catamounts. He, he only had eight, it was just two of eight behind the arc in the first meeting. This is a guy coming in the last five games, shooting almost 50% behind the arc. The former Iowa State Cyclone. Pretty much a half-court man-to-man defensive team, Western Carolina. Shot clock made it all the way to six, and there's a teardrop in traffic dropped by Jaden Campbell. He is a straight line driver. Now his shooting is up this year again. And there's the first turnover forced by that pressure, coach. Yeah, yeah, look, they trapped Russell Jones in the deep corner. You don't want to catch it right there. Watch it here on the inbounds after the teardrop by Campbell. And at 5'8, Jones. Tries to jump up. He's trying to hit Trey Jackson. Just a bit too much on that pass. We've got a couple of pint-sized guards, including Dallas Graziani, number 12 in white. He's five foot eight. There's a block by the big man Charles Lampton, 6'11. That's what he does best. Not necessarily a score for the Catamounts, a defensive presence. Three ball left short that time out of the hand of Russell Jones. Do you think the lower scoring game would favor the Catamounts? No doubt about it. Inside, carving out space and then banking it home. Tough shot by Staten McRae. Well, the Bulldogs have scored 75 or less just three times this season, and all of more losses. Purdue, VCU, and Furman. When they score 75 or more, they're going to win basketball games. And they average 98 points per game in this building. That is just a ridiculous number. Tough miss that time by Woolbright. He got in close and missed it. Second opportunity. Jones, rise and fire three. That rims off in there for the rebound is Campbell. Percentage-wise, Jones is the Catamount's best three-point shooter. I think Jackson's the one that really creates spacing. Jones and they work it down low and add one a chore a chore the 6'9 220 pound junior out of Melbourne Australia nice recognition by Ryland Jones he noticed the mismatch size wise look Lampton comes out on him that leaves Trey Jackson inside simply too much at 6'9 a chore finishes born in the Senegal went to Australia as a teenager and then wound up 
playing at Green Forest High School before he actually played his junior college ball at Chipola, who he's led by one Donnie Tyndall, former Tennessee volunteer and Southern Miss coach. Campbell alley you pass down low and a thunderous slam by Lampton. Lampton may have heard me say he wasn't much of an offensive <laughs> presence. Boy, he, he hammered that one right there. Gave the rim a workout. One point game. Three and a half minutes into the action. Graziano. And the 15 footer is off the mark by a chore and then a foul on the pressure by the Bulldogs. Well, look, we want to talk about pace for the Catamounts, but when they can break the pressure and create numbered situations, you see right there, Campbell throws it to Lampton. Can't finish the first time, but he finishes it the second. They've got to take advantage of those two-on-one, three-on-two situations, knowing, though, that Bulldog defenders are looking to back tip the ball handler. Well, we were wondering how much a shore would be effective and how much he would place out of the game here as the full court pressure continues by the Bulldogs. We'll see it all night. Woolbright up top sets up an open three. Nothing but the bottom of the net for Trey Jackson. He led the Southern Conference last year at almost 44% in three-point shooting. I'm going to tell you, when he gets hot, he can put together four or five in a row. Six early points. A young man out of Blythewood High School in Columbia, South Carolina. A three left short that time by Sanford. Two-point lead for the Catamounts. We're in a break zone here in Birmingham. Wolbright, who leads the country in double-doubles and triple-doubles. Finds Robertson. Robertson stops at the elbow. A fade and fire. Rattles it home. Catamounts already with 11 points. Nice to have Kamar Robertson back. A transfer from within the Southern Conference. Played at Mercer. He's a guy that provides him a little bit of depth now. Behind the back pass. Sets up an open three. Can't find it. Marshall with a good look. And that'll bring us to our first media timeout with 15-13 to play. Western Carolina with some early fireworks. We talked about pace. Well, if you can make threes, go ahead and shoot a big fella wins by any SOCON team. They do have eight wins on the road, so certainly they're not intimidated by opposing environments. Not at all. A couple power five. They won at Notre Dame at, and Vanderbilt in the non-conference. Yeah, clipped an ACC and SEC opponent back in November, December. More of that full court pressure. So far, the Catamounts minus one turnover have handled it quite well. This is Woolbright. He's been rather quiet. Woolbright going to work. Tries to slip it inside. Tough pass to handle. And into the corner. Ten on shot clock. The drive. No finish. The fall by Woolbrook. No. Tapped around. And the next possession for the Catamounts. Fresh 20-second shot clock. Three on the way. Left short. And a rebound reeled in by the Bulldogs. Good transition defense by the Catamounts. That is important as picking that pressure on the offensive side. Out of bounds at a Romain Sanford basketball with 18 to shoot. And the thing is, when you're playing Sanford, they shoot so many threes, you can't just sprint back to the paint conventionally. You've got a located three-point line, not something you always practice. So amazing about this Sanford offense, Bucky Ball, back to that. They don't shoot a ton of threes there. Shit. There's another one sunk that time by Marshall. As a team, they're shooting 41%. That's second in all college basketball, and I've seen this as long as I'm doing it, Dean. Seven guys shooting 40% or better. Two more, 39%. Yeah, crazy numbers when you say, boy, they fast. I think they do, though. The kids race possessions rather than minutes played. And now in transition, they love to run. Taking it all away. Aggressive take basket by Garrett Hick and the finish. He's a graduate transfer. Four-year guy at a and in the score, scored over 1,300 career points, so he knows how to score. They love a track beat at Sanford, and they've got the depth to do it. Straight on three, off the mark, and the rebound gobbled up by Marshall. A healthy Jermaine Marshall is such an advantage for this Sanford squad. It certainly is. He was a second-team All-Southern Conference guy a year ago. Three ball! Marshall right on cue! He was a guy that back in October, November, he was in the conversation of 
who's going to be the player of the year in the Southern Conference? Woolbright. Yeah, Mikhail Brown Jones at UNCG. There's others, but he was right there. Inside, Wolbright trying to muscle his way. Gets the first one blocked and gets the stick back with the left hand. Well, he just stayed with that. 21 double doubles for Wolbright. A bank three by Marshall. The bank opened in Birmingham on a Wednesday night. Look, that drop. The defense, it, it, what Western employees is they're going to drop that guy into the big to help cover Ryland Jones, and he can't recover back fast enough for to Marshall. Pressure broken, hoop in the harm by Bernard Pelote. That's the way to break the full court press. Certainly is. Marshall, he can make threes. You see it right there. Colin Granger too late to recover. He was trying to give drop coverage to the guard, and you just can't give that much. For the Bulldogs. He had four double doubles last year. He had 11 two years ago when he joined the Bulldogs coming from the University of Akron. Again, if it's your first time watching Southern Conference basketball, in particular Samford, you know, Buckyball is fun. And Jermaine Marshall is really good. No doubt about that. And this league is really good. You and I have had the opportunity to call Southern Conference tournaments and champ week and that's one of the most entertaining mid-major conference tournaments out there it is Asheville the city embraces it the arena of 70 some hundred is the perfect size for this league shot left short great job by walling up by Western Carolina and now a steal by the Bulldogs three on two a chore got it and thunders at home Ankle looks okay on that play. It does. Now, it was his right ankle. He <laughs> elevated off the left, but right. you're right. He ran well on that. That's something to monitor his minutes going forward. Although nobody on this team plays more than 25 minutes a game because of going 12 deep in the system they want to do. There's so much depth. They just wear opponents down over time. Campbell out to the wing and back to Campbell on the return with eight on the shot clock. A fake shot blocked from behind. Two on the shot clock. One. Did he get it off? He did, but it's left short. And there for the rebound is a chore. Sanford already with 11 points off the bench. That's one of the strengths of this team. Leaner and a foul from behind. The foul will go against Polo. And we will catch our breath as we step aside. It's Sanford 20. And the cat about 16. And we are off and running. Needlessly has worked his way in. There's no issues with players. He's fine coming off the bench. The culture is really right. Now it's helped when you're 22 and 3. But nevertheless, they, they are they've got all cylinders cooking right here in Birmingham. Speaking of all cylinders, here's a guy who can do all things at the free throw line in State and McCray, 6'5, 190 pound junior out of Charlotte. Averages 12 and a half points, five rebounds. He's second in the league in steals, third in the league in blocks. Yeah, and that, that right there is kind of a microcosm of Bucky Ball, right? He impacts winning at both ends of the floor in 20 to 21 minutes a game. Frenetic defense in the backcourt. Once again displayed by Sanford. Bulldogs up by six. That's the other thing, too. Like the catamounts are breaking this, generally speaking, but it can wear you down mentally and physically. Catamounts got Kamar Robertson back, but they're not as deep as the Bulldogs. Contact! And it bounces out. Boy, it hung up there for about 10 seconds. DJ Campbell flirted with an and one. Instead, he'll go to the line for a pick. A guy that knows how to score over 2,000 points and has had a game where he had 60. He had solid minutes last year as a freshman. Amazingly, he wasn't voted to the All Southern Conference freshman team. I think he came back with a little chip on his shoulder. Now his numbers are up, averaging 12 a game. 
Rattles home the first free throw. A reminder, NBA All-Star Weekend begins Friday at 7 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN and the ESPN app. Stephen A. Smith and Shannon Sharp are the head coaches in the celebrity game from Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. Well played game so far. Only two turnovers in the entire game. Two on the Catamounts, none so far on the Bulldogs. And two for two from the stripe for Campbell. Catamounts pull to within four, and that's going to be an illegal screen. Offensive foul on Sanford. That's a good call right there. Woolbright, he's known for his offense, but he can get down in a stance and stay in a stance and guard guards and forwards in this league. You saw it right there. You have to say, Western Carolina only down four, and Woolbright hasn't taken off yet. Three points, he does have four rebounds, but at any point, he could ignite. He can. You see now it's Sanford in a 2-3 matchup zone. How do you attack it? Well, you've got to try to either pick and, pick and roll, pick and pop, or get somebody at the free throw line extended. Three ball, misses everything. Here comes Sanford. Quickly into the court. This is Walls into the game for the first time. Kick out pass, wide open three. Too strong, offensive tap out. Nice job, Holloway. Holloway gets it back around the screen. Holloway, a lot of dribbling, now probes the baseline. Walls bobbled it, fires it, and missed it. Western Carolina dodged two bullets right there. They caught ball watching on both those threes. Right. Three. <laughs> Take threes in the first half, really? Okay. Well, right, not known for his three-point shooting. That's right. That's the one area that needs improvement if he's going to really make money at the next level. 21 double doubles, three triple doubles to lead all of college basketball by Wilbright. An extra step given away that time by Holloway. Here's a three from Jackson. One point game as we approach nine minutes to go in half number one. Jackson's hit a couple threes. I'm not sure that was the shot with that pace that Justin Gray wants, that, that quickness. State McCray up top, probes the left side, a fade and fire, and that one rims off. Another rebound for Wolbright. That's six caroms already for him. Wolbright, power dribble in the lane, nothing there. My Wolbright has walls right in his face. That's right, and if you back up on him, he'll get ahead of steam. You know, you'll say, well, he's not shooting it real well from behind the arc. He's just too crafty. He'll find a teammate. Jackson had a good look at it. Now Jackson's going to get the steal. He'll advise pass that time. You don't see that very often out of... Samford as fast as they play they generally make good decisions They'll push it to half court and then who's ever transporting the ball will make the decision there whether they continue at that pace or slow it up Just the second turnover on Samford Campbell takes it in the timber and gets it to go Nice job on the attack by DJ Campbell He's an X factor tonight, you know, the, the attention's going to be around Woolbright, and then you know Jones and Jackson are shooters. He's a guy that can put points on the board for him. Wide open three at the top, knocked down by one of the other big men, that's Riley Allenspach. 6'11", freshman. Good looking freshman, again, Lampton got caught in that drop. And he just simply couldn't recover in time. He might have extended minutes tonight with the ankle injury to a chore. Wolbright starting to heat up. And that time a turnover in transition. Here comes Tayton McRae. Got it back and missed it from close range. Credit Trey Jackson for getting back to causing that Euro step to the miss. Jones and leads the break and throws it low to Trey Jackson and that'll bring us to a timeout with 6.59 to go. We say it, they'll shoot it at a 40 percent. Look, I know you've never coached in college, but I see something in you and I want to make sure we don't miss out. I'm giving you the opportunity of a lifetime. I thought it was great our conversation with him earlier today. He said, 
you know what? I didn't know how to feel because I didn't want to leave such a great situation. It was an obvious rebuild here. You had COVID going on, so that was an impediment if you got the job at that point in time. But obviously, it has worked out well. It's worked out really well. Yeah, he, he said I got hired in April. Really didn't get to meet my team for several months because of that COVID situation. But, yeah, credit Martin Newton. What a terrific person, a terrific director of athletics, by the way, in Indianapolis right now. Tuning in, I'm sure, on ESPNU. Step back three on the way. Rims off. Nice tap out. Boy, Sanford's done that a few times already. Now uh, passing up a three and a beautiful feed. What a pass that time by Ryland Jones, who does a little bit of everything, the ultimate glue guy. He's not always flashy, but he is a big piece to this Sanford puzzle. And Western Carolina coach Justin Gray, when we were asking him who are you most concerned about, that was the guy, Ryland Jones. Yeah, most would say, is it a chore? Is it Jermaine Marshall coming back off the injured reserve, so to speak? And you could go down the list, but that guy right there, two years at Utah, then two years at Utah State. He had 75 career starts before he came here to Sanford, but he's been the real difference maker for this team and taken him to the next level. 131 assists to just 33 turnovers. That's a 4-1 to one ratio to lead the league. And, and playing that in a pace that's up and down. Wolfright hasn't really gotten into a groove yet. Missed that one short, shakes his head in disgust. And then a bump foul by 32, Colin Granger. The transfer from Ohio by way of Johns Creek, Georgia. Yeah, in the blink of an eye, you know, Samford can get up and down. Whether you can't celebrate. If you make a basket, you've got to sprint back. If you miss, you've got to get back. And just hope that you can contain them, slow them up, and play five on five. Nice move right there by Campbell. Campbell, 83% at the free throw line. One of the plethora of Bulldogs who I mentioned shoot over 40 from three. He shoots 47 from downtown. And as you pointed out during the break, Dean, already Sanford has played 11 guys. They can wear you down over time. And they can go 12, maybe 13 now that Marshall's back. Justin Gray, Western Carolina, really won't go more than eight deep. And without Cornelius Williams tonight, the three C's I call them Cornelius Williams Charles Lampton and Colin Granger. They those three kind of man the center spot now. It's going to be Granger and Lampton exclusively Sanford on a 6-0 run and a five-point lead Sanford staying with that zone they've seen a little success Jones Barely grazes the iron. That's a fresh 20-second shot clock, but Lampton lost his bearings and stepped out of bounds. Justin Gray encouraging his squad. What a job he has done in just his third year with Western Carolina. The winter, winter persistent before. And again, an all-conference player at Wake Forest scored nearly 2,000 points in a Demon Deacon uniform. Great action there, and a weaving bucket for Nathan Johnson. He's primarily known as a three-point shooter, but a nice cut to the basket. He saw he was overplayed, so he made the cut right in the lane. The Catamounts have had a flurry of turnovers here in the last couple of minutes, three of them. That's where he'd find Wilbrett right there and let him go to work. He'll make a good decision. Left hand, right hand, doesn't matter when you get Wilbright close to the bucket. That's exactly what it is, a bucket. He's got eight points and seven rebounds. There's a three, splashed by Marshall. We're seeing no ill effects of him being out for nine games. This is his fourth game back. He has been on fire. 14 points for Marshall, and now another turnover. A steal by Marshall. Quickly in the front court, a quick fire three. Offensive rebound, and the shot blocked. Great block that time by Pelote. Well, you said they're going to play a lot of guys. They got a lot of guys that can make passes. CAA. He knows how to win. And Gray was talking about the Super Bowl. I said, when did you practice? He was, I had to plan practice around Russell cooking for like 60 student athletes <laughs> at his off-campus apartment. It's a shot 
And it rattles home for Jaden Campbell. He's had a good first half. Now five points, three rebounds. And they just keep coming at you in waves and wearing you down. You got to work to get open. Then you got to work to bring it up. Nothing when you're playing Samford. To get in the front court here, they just beat the 10 second count, but then falling to the ground is Jones. He's smothered by multiple defenders. Well, well, that was a scrum. I don't know that anybody really did have possession to call a held ball. Watch it here. Jones knows he was trying to beat the clock. Ten seconds. Yeah, he just lost his footing. Yeah. And then Graziani, and then there's Jones. And at that point, it looks like an invasion. <laughs> Everywhere Russell Jones looks, there's a white jersey and a couple of hands reaching for the basketball. And the pressure does the job again as they get it on the arrow. And now an offensive foul on Samper, so they'll give it right back. That's going to go against Graziani. He can't believe that. Graziani, who won the Division II National Championship for the Nova Sharks down in South Florida. They were undefeated. He hadn't lost many games in his career. No, he's 89 and 3. Excuse me, 89 and 4. It's amazing. In his three year college career. What do you want to see out of the Catamounts here in the final three minutes to get back from a 10 point deficit? It's been a while since they've scored here. They've been stuck on 25. Samford's mixed up a couple of things. The, the full court pressures caused some turnovers. They now have seven. They had eight in the first game in totality. But then we've seen some man. We've thrown out of Samford in the half court. And I think that goes back to one of those things we were talking about. They can't let. Sanford's hectic style right. affect their identity. Well, they've already got seven turnovers. They only turned it over eight times in the first meeting. That's a season low forcing turnovers by Sanford. The South Carolina women, the nation's only undefeated Division I team, highlighting our ESPN Thursday basketball doubleheader. They will square off against Rakia Jackson of the Lady Balls in Knoxville with coverage beginning at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Kamar Robertson, who's healthy and really paying off dividends for the Catamounts here of late as they pull to within eight. It's the only style of its kind in the Southern Conference, Sam, for that is. They've got good, good athletes, but a high level of unpredictability when they're playing. Uh, they love a track meet, and that's exactly what they've turned this game into. We were wondering, okay, number one defense, Western Carolina, number one scoring offense, Sanford, which one would give? You know, the score's not that high, but you just get the feeling that Sanford has been able to dictate this game. They have. You know, forcing those turnovers. They've kind of kept Wolbright in check. Again, Stanford at home averages 98 points per game. Little nickel and diver, 40 feet from the bucket by Kamar Robertson. And his team foul, number five on the Catamounts. What do the Catamounts need to do in the last couple of minutes? I think also at the defensive end, they need to make sure that they are guarding guys according to the scouting report. Marshall's not in there, neither is a chore, but they've got to locate three-point shooters. They've not done a real good job of that, especially when Ryland Jones or Dallas Graziani draw and drop the, de the defender at the top. Sanford so far, 5 of 13 from behind the arc. Contact there. Again, Robertson, two quick fouls on the senior guard. They don't have the depth of Sanford, so foul trouble is going to be much more of an issue for the Catamounts and the Bulldogs, wouldn't you say? It is, and they're down a man with, you know, they get Kamar Robertson back healthy, but now they're down Cornelius Williams, who had given good quality minutes recently. So, yes, to your point, they, they cannot afford foul trouble. Wilbright gets a steal, sets up Jackson on a three. And now a foul down low, and that will go against the Catamounts. And just like that, in the blink of an eye, they go from three and four team fouls to now it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. 
That one whistled on Lampton. Only player with two is Robertson so far in this game. Well, Marshall has two for Sanford as well. Marshall got up to the great start for the Bulldogs. One of the players that we highlighted at the top and still leading the way with 14 points in this game. And we haven't seen a lot of a chore. We talked about his ankle. He's played five and a half minutes. But if there is a team in the league that can absorb somebody getting injured, it is this deep Samford Bulldog team. First free throw drilled by Garrett Hicks. Transfer from Alabama a &M. There's a chore. We didn't think he was going to play when we saw him this afternoon. <laughs> you and I had the same reaction. We saw him walking in that boot and said, wait a minute, that's a new story right there. Got hurt in the BMI game. Wolbright weaving his way to the bucket. A little too strong on the finish. Three ball from the top, no good. Another offensive rebound. Just watch the, sorry, just watch the pace with Wolbright yes. right now. He lets things settle, and then he'll find the open man. Pelot was fading on that three. Wolbright again, and Wolbright muscles his way back to the 10. That's he how you get is a double doubles. Yeah, yeah, I mean, look, he had two rebounds and two points on that possession. 21 double doubles on the season. And well on his way to number 22 tonight, already 10 points, eight rebounds. Coming up on 90 seconds to go, first half. Three from the corner. Miss fires. And out of bounds, it'll remain Sanford basketball. Good possession at the other end on offense for the Catamounts. Woolbright, and he came up with the first rebound, found Pelote, and he found the rebound the second time and put it in himself. Just feels like an important minute and a half for yeah. the Catamounts. Yeah, the, the final 90 seconds here in the first four minutes of the second half will be huge for the visiting Catamounts. And Sanford perfect 14-0 in this building this year, and averaging nearly 98 points a game. Shot clock at six and a rare turnover and a rare mistake by Graziani. Yeah, both Graziani and Ryland Jones, Jones, I beg your pardon. Yeah, great ball security. Jones, Jones doesn't have a game this year with more turnovers than assists. As I said earlier. I mean, the two of them are just ball control savants, if you will. They rarely make mistakes, either one of them. Jones up top. Jones is the minute. one guy that can get by this Samford defense in the half court. Great denial by Johnson, forcing the turnover. Wide open three, rims off, and almost an offensive rebound. Great hustle that time by Johnson. Catamounts. They're a little slow getting into front court there and a use it or lose it timeout called by Justin Gray. And we will take it with him with 35 ticks to go and Sanford up by seven. So that's how they're creating such great wins. So here's the two stars we talked about at the top and they haven't let us down. Wolbright 10 and 9 but Jermaine Marshall in those threes. That is something that Justin Gray will certainly talk about at halftime. 15 second differential. Sanford should be able to play for the final shot of the half. Inside it comes. Blocked from the weak side. What a swap by Hicks. Suffocating defense by Sanford. Shot clock is off for the Bulldogs. Jones probing right. Inside it goes. Great feed and the finish by Allensbach. And that'll bring us to the end of the first half. And what a half for Sanford. 38-29, our halftime score. Boy, to rip inch here. But Sanford did what Sanford does. They played 12 guys, they shot threes, and they forced turnovers. They did what they do, but I will say this. I mean, Western Carolina... If you hold Sanford to 38 in this building and a half, that's actually an accomplishment of sorts. The question becomes, what can the Catamounts do better offensively? Yeah, they've got to have better ball security, and then they've also got to get some easy baskets. Now, that's easy done. Jones to three, and a chance 
for a four-point play. That's a good way to get it started. Yeah, that was a set play. Nice job by Justin Gray. They went one way, and then you see Woolbright. He knew that Lampton was going to re-screen. Lampton screened for Woolbright, then he turned and re-screened for Russell Jones Jr. Nice play out of the timeout or out of the halftime. Jones has been playing well. He's in double figures, seven out of the last ten. And the Academy after the missed free throw, it goes off of a bulldog. Lampton has made some nice plays. He's had some blocks, but he those screens, that, those are the stats and things that don't show up in the final box score, but they lead to win. And again, I mentioned Western Carolina. They have been road warriors. Eight wins on the road this season. That's tied for first in the league, and then they give it right back. An offensive foul. Give Graziani the credit. And that kind of sucks some of the life out of you after that three by... Jones to start the half for the Catamounts then he misses the free throw and they get a second chance and an offensive foul by Campbell hey, You could have had a six-point play if they hit another three there How about that a little leaner creative shot by Ryland Jones Never flashy, but you can't speed him up. There's such a great pace to Ryland Jones game Fifth-year guy played in a ton of games a ton of tough environments Heavy contact and an offensive foul called on Woolbright two Mack trucks Colliding and kind of a violent collision that time with Campbell Bulldogs. We Talked about a chore with that ankle in a boot this afternoon, but he has showed quality minutes. They've obviously managed those minutes tonight for depth, but he's a guy that leads the Southern Conference in field goal percentage. He can make threes. He's a rim protector, so I think they're thankful to have the lead that they do with him just playing limited minutes. And what a journey again for him to come from the Senegal to Australia to Green Forest Prep in Decatur, Georgia, and then Chipola Junior College, and then here he is starring for Sanford. A lot of passport <laughs> stickers on that run. He a difference in the first game, uh, the first matchup, I should say. 35 points, 10 rounds. But as you mentioned, they're so deep, they don't rely on one player. If anybody can afford a miss or a, an injured version of himself, they can do it. Yeah, that was really the only game this season where somebody just went for 30 some points and was the difference and the reason the Bulldogs would win. Jones patient and on the second attempt, an and one for a chore. He got rejected by the rim on the first and then went up with the left on the second. Yeah, kind of a four two ounce. Watch this here after the miss under the rim. And so he really shields Lampton from being able to block the shot. If I didn't know any better, he was doing a little mic and drill. <laughs> Little right, little left. I like it. <laughs> free throw up and in. Silky smooth on the free throw line. The last three. It allows Sanford to set their full court pressure, and just like that, now it's a 13-point lead. A little bit of a danger zone now for the Catamounts. To your point earlier in this game, what is bully ball? Well, part of it is not just the threes; it's points in the paint. Sanford has two points in the paint. Yeah, they want to shoot at least threes. They want to get layups and free throws. They did a lot of that in the first half, and they've started here in the second as well. Raziani, little show and tell. How about that move? 5-8, a buck 40. Nice pass down low and the finish for Campbell. That's a much needed basket. The Catamounts get to get back, build their defense right now. They're going to start stringing together. We are situated on the same side as the coaches, which is kind of unusual. So we can hear Justin Gray imploring his troops to pick up the defense. Get some stops, get a run going here. Now that was a switch situation. Deep three, late shot clock. That is a backbreaker. Jaden Campbell from downtown. Well, notice Western Carolina now, they, they started switching that high pick and roll rather than just dropping the big guy. 
never seen three-point numbers across the board for a team like this in college basketball. Again, 41% as a squad, second best in the country. Seven players, 40% or better. Rise and fire and a silky mid-range game displayed by Wilbright. Quickly in transition. First attempt, no. Second attempt, yes. A chore. Again, said it in the first half, you simply can't celebrate when you're playing Stanford. Not that Carol, Western Carolina celebrated, but you've got to sprint back. It is an all-out sprint in transition defense. Now a sprint on the offensive end by the Catamounts. We got a track meet, my friend. Yeah, we certainly do, although it favors Samford. I'm not sure this is the pace Western Carolina wants for the next 16 and a half minutes. Runner. Hired unkind there, and the rebound reeled in by Lampton. And then a foul on Samford. Western Carolina has switched it up a little bit from the first half. They're now switching that that high screen rather than dropping the big to protect the ball handler. Watch this right here. Campbell, see the switch happens. He switches out. Lampton switches out on Campbell. You really think the mismatch is in the paint with a chore on DJ Campbell, but instead Lampton not used to guarding 25 feet from the basket. Speaking of a chore, he was adamant in giving the stink eye to Charles Lampton, his adversary in the paint there. They got tangled up and the chore did not appreciate some of the contact. Another turnover forced by that full court press and then a foul on the Catamounts. They just wear you down. Their style of play is unlike any other the teams in this conference face and quite honestly I, and I know I'm looking way ahead But can you imagine the Samford team showing up on? Selection Sunday you would not no. want to be that team that faces them whether it's a 314 a 413 a 512 They present a lot of problems. Yeah, I mean there's just not a lot of teams at this level that do all the things in combination that they do and one of the things that they do is force turnovers you see Western Carolina overall They're pretty crisp with the basketball but turnovers have been an issue in this ball game tonight already with 11 Yeah, that's one over their limit three over what they had in the first matchup the Legal screen that time by Marshall but to, to talk about What Sanford does and again you've seen them before Dean but for, for those tuning in that have never seen Sanford play and what we're talking about bully ball They are top ten in the nation Three-point percentage fast break points steals per game bench points assists per game and turnovers per game That is a unique medley of excellence It's a style guys like to play and a Foul That'll go against Sanford trying to get another offensive rebound. And that will bring us to immediate timeout as we catch our breath. Sanford extending the lead. 50 is arguably the best defensive coach in the league, but his Spartans can play offense this year. They're 9-4. and four. Dwight Perry, Wofford, Bob Ritchie, and the job he continues to do at Furman. His guys are now healthy. J.P. Pagese, Marcus Foster, Alex Williams. And Ben Vanderwall, who had been out, missed some time. He had 15. He led them tonight. That's a great sign for the Paladins. What a great story for the conference as a whole last year that Richie had, leading Furman past Virginia in the opening round. I go back to the last Southern Conference tournament that I did, and Steve Forbes was the head coach leading ETSU. He's now at Wake. Mike Young at Wofford at Virginia Tech. Wes Miller at Cincinnati. And, of course, Lamont Paris coached Chattanooga. The job he's doing with South Carolina, he's a serious candidate, not just for SEC Coach of the Year, but National Coach of the Year. Great coaching stories coming out of this league. Agreed. And he did the same thing at Chattanooga. Uh, you know, every year they got better, and it culminated in that NCAA tournament in 2022. David Jean Baptiste hits that Hail Mary 40-footer just over half court. And then a year later, they beat Furman, and then a year later, Furman exercises some demons, and they beat Chattanooga to advance. And we know what happened in Virginia. Well, the Catamounts could use a few stops here. You're always in the danger zone when you're playing a team with the spurt ability of Sanford. 
Another three. Another make. Nothing but the bottom of the net for Jaden Campbell, who now has 11. And then a bump foul on the Bulldogs, Garrett Hicks. Yeah, you, you, you said it best right there. The spurt ability, the ability for Samford to really put points on the board in a hurry. They're susceptible both ways to swings. But tonight, you know, a 17-point lead feels every bit of that. They've stayed with this zone a good bit. We talked in the first half. I like Woolbright right there. Let him catch and operate. Whoa. That was major contact on the elbow. You had Robertson plowing over Marshall, and the officials caught it. Yeah, he wanted to come up and set that ball screen. Watch. He wanted to screen and let Woolbright get going. Oh, I say, this game's going to get shippy. Yeah, well, wa watch. I mean, it's it's a hard screen, but at the same time, that left arm of Marshall right. brings Robertson down. And I think that's what Justin Gray was saying. Hey, that, that's one on them, too. Yep. Well, we said at the top, that guy right there, four and white, is a fierce competitor. High motor, impacts winning in a lot of ways. Up top. And now into the corner for another open three, and Campbell is in the zone. 14 points, the feathery touch on his third three. Three for three from downtown in the second half. Good pass. Campbell might have gotten deflected. Extra possession, and a nice finish by Pelot. Nice job by Pelot, boy, that was much needed. Trying to stop the bleeding, an 18-point lead. Another bucket. This time it's Marshall on a runner and another friendly bounce. Yeah, he is back in full form. No rust from being out for six weeks. A game high, 16 points for Marshall and a turnover. And then they give it right back to the Catamounts. And there is Campbell down low and a foul. A chance for three the hard way for D.J. Campbell. Campbell previously on that three. He knows he's hot. He buried himself in the corner right there. Pelote just got sucked in when he saw Marshall. And then Marshall puts it on the floor, takes a hit, and he can finish with the soft touch. Again, he's got that 6'7 body, but they'll list him as a power forward. But he's he's a lot of different things. Not totally unlike Fontarius Woolbright, he's a positionless guy. Now, he doesn't have the guard skills that Woolbright does, but he can play all over the floor. He's perfect in this buckyball system. 70% of the year for Campbell. Rattles home the free throw. 17-point game. 13 and change to go here in Birmingham, the Pete Hanna Center, where Sanford tries to improve to 15-0 on the year. Samford just got the Catamounts all spread out, and that's creating driving opportunities that then need to penetrate a kick. Razani tried to thread the needle down low for a chore. You get the spacing of Samford. I like it a lot, especially when you've got Graziani and Jones at there at the same time. They'll find the shoes. Wow, pass inside to Walls. Walls lost it. Got it out two on the shot clock that's just a desperation even great defense time by the catamounts came at the right time catamounts dug in they're not for this thing i mean they can score as well got right there we haven't we haven't called trey jackson's name in a while he had a couple of threes in yeah. the first half and then just went away you want more paint touches right you do, but you know the zone has kind of bottled him up just a little bit. Yeah. Bright number two, purple jersey again, lead nation and doubles. One reason away from another. Jones fades, miss, tapped around and held in by the Bulldogs. Samford will live with that. Down low and most an and one. Real active second. For a chore. 
It's three on Lambton. Kind of the game within the game, not necessarily an, an issue yet, but Justin Gray is going to have to make a decision. Does he come with Colin Granger or does he play quote unquote small ball and put Bernard Pelote at the, what you would call the five, the center position? Great college basketball Saturday, including three games to highlight due to state at two. They go ACC, the Kansas and Oklahoma, and then the finale in the Southeastern Conference. Kentucky taking on Bruce Pearl's Auburn Tigers, where they're undefeated at the Neville Arena. It's all Saturday on ESPN. These are high-level athletes, but when you're facing this pressure, a guy like Jackson, Jones, good three-point shooters, and you have to constantly get open against the press and then dribble it up at times, it can take your legs a little bit, and it can affect your three-point shooting as you wear into the second half. Right. Trying to take over inside, but everywhere he looks, there's another white jersey waiting for him. Oh, spin move. Not sure about the finish, but he gets a foul call. <laughs> That's a, a break for Staten McRae, who is a little bit out of control with 11.57 to go. Sanford starting to pull away. You know better than others. You cover the SEC and know it. But, yeah, those four. And let me give just a little bit of love to John Schulman, former Chattanooga coach, doing great things at Alabama Huntsville, Division II. They were in the Sweet 16 a year ago. He's got them primed again. It's 106 and 36 in four plus seasons in Huntsville. I think what we've learned about geography, the whole mismatch, you got to be a football, football school. You could actually be the both. And many, many of these southern teams that are excelling right now in both sports. Well said. All right. Western's got to, they've yeah. got to excel a little bit at both ends of the floor right now. They're not getting stops. And they've turned it over too much. What's the magic button to push here? Well, Woolbright's got to be the one to make things happen. Not just scoring, but, you know, when 50% of the offense comes through him. Tough shot by Campbell, rips off. He's been one and done for the Catamounts as well in the second half. And to some sense, they're, they're letting the, the lack of offense affect their defense. Right. You, you called it during the break there. They look a little bit out of sorts. Yeah. Lob pass down low. Bobble, the scoop, and then the finish by a chore. He, once he gets his hands on it down that deep, he's nearly impossible to stop. Yeah, that was a terrific pass by Jones through it, only where a chore could catch it. But you're right. On the other end by Pelot. But we're seeing two of the most improved players in the Southern Conference year over year. A chore for Samford, DJ Campbell for Western. I would also tell you that Donovan Atwell at UNCG has made huge strides. The second half has not lacked any physicality, that's for sure. That would be the ninth foul. But what do we have here? Technical? They called the intentional foul. See if we can get another look at that. Dude, there was just a, a moment of action by Todd Austin, the official, who yeah. ended up making that call and sending Graziani to the free throw line. And I mentioned how chippy it's gotten in the second half. We've had a few players get tangled up, a couple of flavored fouls. And one out of two at the free throw line for Graziani. Watch here at the top of the circle again, right at the three-point line. Watch Graziani, and then here comes Pelote. They they said he dropped that left shoulder intentionally, and so it was a flagrant foul. Tell you what, <laughs> Graziani earned those three throws because <laughs> that one would have put a little dent in his chest. What a calming influence on the floor he is, and again, a proven winner. D2 National Championship last year at Nova down in South Florida. Extra step for Hacks and a gliding bucket. Staten McRae. Now 
now these two teams the officials have to make sure that they keep things under control well i think the catamounts just look like a frustrated bunch right now and and here's the thing about stanford and you know this as well as anybody they don't take their foot off the gas defensively no it is it is all gas very little break right i think i think bucky would tell you it's easier to say whoa than giddy up right and i mentioned in the first meeting between these two teams a victory on the road by Sanford. The Catamounts only had eight turnovers, but that has been a different story here today. 13 already in this game. And a couple of frustration fouls. That time it's Wolbright drawing the foul, not a chore. So Wolbright will go to the free throw line. He's one rebound shy of his 22nd double double of the season. He leads the country in that category. He's got two triple doubles. Leads the nation in that category. And He's one of those guys when we talked to Justin Gray head coach of the Catamounts He said, you know, he reminds me of a guy that I played with in Josh In terms of his leadership, he's kind of sight a few words. He does say his teammates listen to every word they have true meaning Yeah, that's exactly right. Josh Howard was a senior when Justin was a freshman at Wake Forest and some terrific teams Dave Odom to Skip Prosser the Dino Gaudio boy those were some really really good teams Steve Forbes you mentioned doing a great job really bringing Wake Forest back Justin Gray keeps up with a lot of his former Wake Forest originally from Charlotte North Carolina and coaching that long you mentioned after a really successful career at Wake Forest almost 2,000 points then played overseas for a dozen years spent some time at Winthrop and then got the head job three years ago and we have seen a nice trajectory in wins in field goal percentage and in defense across the board I mean these these are two rising stars in the coaching profession no question sure Whips it down low. State and McRae. Seven on the shot clock. State and McRae just muscling his way inside. Took it right at the chest of Campbell. Yeah, we call it Bucky Ball. They call it Bully Ball at times. <laughs> now, Bucky Ball just forced another turnover. And they do that so well. We're going to sure. play a chore one on one in the paint. I'm not sure they're able to do that with without Lampton or Granger. They got away with it that time. Under 10 minutes to go in this one. 15-footer is good by Trey Jackson. Justin Gray really wants to challenge his team right now. Can they get on a run? He's got a couple of timeouts. I don't think he wants to use them yet. He wants to see how his guys are going to respond out there. And will pass inside. Walls goes to kind of blocked. Nice selection by Pelot. And then a turnover. Or no, it'll remain Catamount basket with 8.53 to go. More substitutions coming in for Sanford. One fleet for another. They play 13 guys, meaningful minutes. That was one of the things that Bucky McMillan told us that you know, he was able to sell the style of play and the fact that he's going to be able to play a number of guys and he believes, you know, like all these young men, as you know, Dean, they, they want to play in the NBA. He believes the way they play basketball will only help players especially at the next level. So many things that they teach and implement are what they do in the pros. Right. What's your athleticism like? Can you shoot? Can you defend in pick and roll situations? All those things. And, and you're right in recruiting everybody says they want to play fast they want to run players but they really don't know what that means the catamounts have seemingly had a cup stringing some defensive stops together but had a push underneath there but yeah back to your point you're right it's it's a style that is recruiting friendly uh, you know and one here it's not even I've been I've been in the shoes to convince guys it's more about the number of possessions the number of minutes you play nobody averages more than 25 minutes on this team mm -hmm. and you don't last on the floor long if you're not going to be 
all in on that defensive side. It's going to show in a hurry if you're not able to, you know, pick up, defend full court. You're not going to do the little things. Now you see the Bucky ball break down. Let's see, 20. They've already fired up 21, so that's that's a point well done. 100% of points with three points. Three-point land, free throw, and layups pretty close to that. A few times they've went the shot clock hit single digits not a whole lot and yes they have pressed on virtually every possession yep and when they haven't they've, they've kind of gone to the zone a little bit more in the half court i think for the simple reason of they can kind of corral wolf right that way and when jackson's not shooting that well yeah bucky's chosen to stay with it if you're western carolina though you got to play the long game i mean there's there's not only time tonight, but this this could be a semifinal or a potential final. Again, as mentioned, there's five or six teams that will head to Asheville with a legitimate chance. But right now, Sanford's the team to beat. But I think Western, they're less than an hour away from that Asheville Civic Center. Wolbright wanted a foul, and so too did head coach Justin Gray, who jumped about 10 feet in the air. Had a few words for the officials. He doesn't get overly animated. Watch us here again. Uh, nice, just head to shoulders fake by Wolbright to get Allensbach in the air. Wolbright again. We're swarming defense in the middle of a triple team. They get it. And Rylan Jones tracks down the rebound quickly in the front court. Jones always making the right decision. We'll bleed a little clock here with other eight minutes to go. Job by Hicks right there, cementing that pivot foot. Campbell inside, missed it. And out of bounds to the Catamounts as we will step aside with 7.27 to go to the Catamounts. Have a rather run left in them. They'll need it, trailing by 19. Okay, with flirting with 100 again tonight. They've already set a school record for regular season wins with 22. The program record is 24. Seems fairly certain that they'll reach that even before they get to Asheville. See some of the top performers tonight. Wolbright does have a double-double, but not the typical dominating performance that we've seen him have on display. No, it hasn't been. I I interestingly, Western shooting 50% from the floor in the second half, but it's been the turnovers that have caused some angst, some personal fouls. So you can't just look at the stats and determine, you know, what it's been for Western. And as we, we talk about how Sanford is able to wear you down, right? Well, they have had four players with 24 minutes plus played. Excuse me, uh, Western Carolina has. Sanford has had none. So, I mean, it just kind of goes to show you you got guys for Western Carolina that are going to start breathing a little bit heavier here in the final seven minutes of this game. Yeah, well said. Sanford, they played 12 guys, nine have scored, four in double figures, so it's been balanced. Really, the only negative you, Marshall goes to the bench with fouls. But otherwise, they haven't been at their very best, but they have played buckyball. Yeah, it's going to be a walk. I think that Hicks thought he could sell a foul call there and a little bit of a push, but in the end, the official's not buying it. Four players for Sanford in double figures, and to your point, on any given night, it could be four, five, six, seven different guys in double figures. Yeah, you talk about, you know, if you're Western Carolina today in the shoot around, they're talking about a chore because he had 35 in the first meeting. Marshall's coming back. And then, as you mentioned, Justin Gray talks about Ryland Jones, but who mentioned Jordan uh, Jimbo and A.J. Right. Stanton and State McRae and I mean, just the list goes on and on. Even Nate, Nathan Johnson has given them good minutes here right. tonight. You say, well, you know, Ryland Jones only has two points. Yeah, but he's got five assists. He's got good defensive plays. And now he's got an extra two points right on cue. Right on cue.
Western Carolina, they've got to stay on the road a little bit. Three of their next, their final five will be away from the Ramsey Center in Cullowhee. Final six minutes here, Sanford with a cozy 19-point lead. Jones weaving, firing, and just flips it up there. He may have heard you. Yeah. <laughs> I only have two points. Only two? Let me show you my game. All right, Mr. Announcer guy. <laughs> Here's four more right at you. Yeah. And that's just a... You might call that a fatigue turnover or a frustration turnover. Ryland Jones talked about it. Steady. Never gets out of sorts. Just got a nice pace to him. But he's not, he's not flashy, but boy, the results add up to a winner. And they had good players last year in the backcourt. Quez Glover, who had played at yeah. Florida. Bubba Parham. Uh, it played at Georgia Tech. And those guys moved on. And, you know, I remember talking to... Bucky McMillan this summer. He was at Lake Point Sports watching the Under Armour tournament and said, hey, I've got a couple of guards coming in, a guy from Utah and a guy from Division II. And I'm thinking, yeah, who are they? What are they? Boy, he was exactly right. He knew what he was getting with these two. Uh, and you just get the feeling sometimes with a program and a, a young coach, and again, Bucky's only 40 years of age, so much of building a program is momentum, and succeed, uh, success breeds more success, and, and you just kind of see that happening here. You just get the feeling that something special is brewing here in Birmingham. Yeah, for sure. Goes back to Martin Newton. He, know, he knew that Bucky was the right coach at the right time. He's all about Birmingham, and... They've just they've just done a good job. He's he's really compiled a good staff as well. Right, former his former college coach, yeah. Dwayne Rebel. That's a great story from Birmingham Southern. Yeah, he is a special assistant, and Mitch Cole, who was an assistant at the time, is now his top lieutenant here. Good good basketball minds. There's a lot of good coaches in this league. And we talked about the do's and don'ts leading up to this game. Dean, you uh, kind of laid it out what it was going to take for the Catamounts to win it. Yeah, do limit turnovers. They haven't done that, right? They've got 15 now. And I think they've let the hectic style affect them a little bit. For Samford, yes, they got the game hot. Maybe not in the 100 range, but... And they didn't change a thing other than they added a guy by the name of Jermaine Marshall. <laughs> He's built on his first couple games back after injury. Well, Marshall got it all started. He had double figures in the blink of an eye. There's a foul drawn that time by DJ Campbell. I were talking before we signed on today to go back to the hiring of Bucky McMillan. To hire a high school coach at this level, I mean, it, it's just so extremely rare. Penny Hardaway is a guy that comes to mind, but I can't think of many others. No, there, there's not been. And even with the success, right, you talk about five state titles, 332 wins in 12 years. And, you know, it was interesting that Martin, this was the, his third hire. And boy, was the charm. But it's a roll of the dice. It, it is. Because if it doesn't work, people say, yeah. what are you doing hiring a high school yeah. coach? Yeah. And he hadn't even been a high school, hadn't been a college assistant. Right. Right. And, but it has all worked out. Credit Newton for being his best sounding board in that first year when they were building things. It was COVID. They had they had several games canceled. Didn't have a full roster. But it's all. It really started to come together last year when he was the coach of the year. Twenty-one games, and they had aspirations of winning. He's got a chance to win coach of the year in the SoCon three consecutive years if he wins the award again this season. He actually coached a couple of current NBA guys while he was coaching in high school. Trenton Watford, who played at LSU, now in the NBA, and Colby Jones. Nineteen-point lead for the Bulldogs, looking to improve to twenty-three and three. They already had the most amount of victories they've ever had in a season since turning Division. And they're certainly back onto that total. Yeah, they are. Wolf right on that last because that's the first time this half against the zone where he's been able to catch it at the elbow, read, react, and then use the rim to shield the chore. 
They needed more of that about 10 minutes ago. Wilbright, 17 points, 11 rebounds. But like you said, a little too little, too late. Jackson up top, finds Wilbright. Back out to Jackson, deep three on the way. Wilbright, another rebound. Wilbright, 14-footer, got it. That is his game in a nutshell, right? Offensive yep. rebound, little mid-range jumper. Yep, yep. He, he really is a pass-first guy, even though he averages 22 and a half. He's, he's unselfish, but yeah, he's got a knack to, to where the ball's going to come off, rebounds it, and he's got a nice mid-range. 19 points, 13 rebounds for the SoCon preseason play of the year and already a three-time player of the month in the Southern Conference. Final media timeout, Sanford tasting what would be this awfully tough to defeat this Sanford game if you don't have your A game. And when you look at the line so far tonight for the Catamounts, 38% from the field, 24 from three, and the turnovers again 15 times they've given it away. It's just tough to beat a team this good with those kind of numbers on the road if you're Western and yeah it's a couple of baseball analogies right when you're playing Samford you got to bring your a game you got to bring that fastball and you can't swing at bad pitches and I thought that you know you mentioned it earlier right the Catamounts hit that three to start the second half Russell Jones jr. and then after that they just got out of sorts and they got a little frustrated foul down low and then the rebound at Seb slam well, to continue with your baseball analogy, if I may, Dan, this squad for Sanford out of the bullpen throwing 99, and they have kept the heat from moment one to the final 255 of this game. There's been no let up. No. There's been nothing soft about anything they do offensively or defensively. They legitimately have 12 guys that can keep the foot on the gas at all times they can mix and match they can play when a chores there they can play he and Marshall together play a little bigger they can play smaller they never don't have shoot floor, right and that's the thing too as much as they'll full court press and do different things boy they come at you in waves offensively and most everybody has the freedom to shoot threes but rarely take bad shots no that's right when teams generally play fast you don't you see high turnovers you, you see maybe lack of assists but none of the case with with these Sanford Bulldogs uh, they, they assist on a very high percentage of their buckets they've got assists in this ball game on their 27 field goals they show even better than that very unselfish team doesn't seem like a team that has anybody that's overly consumed about being the guy in terms of numbers on any given night somebody could be leading this team in scoring they go on the road saturday to mercer and then next wednesday they'll host Furman in what will be another high level southern conference matchup the final two and a half minutes Sanford looking for its 23rd win of the year and a 12 and 1 conference mark and a perfect 15 and 0 here in the Pete Hanna Center. Nice pass finding the open man. And it's been that kind of night for the Catamounts. Might be one of the best looks they've gotten all night. Yeah, you really thought it was going to be a Trey Jackson kind of night. He's now two of nine behind the arc. It is for a couple, and then when I cold. Banging in, no whistle, there's the whistle, and they're going to get a block call on Russell Jones. Now, I think he might have been inside the restricted area, is the only thing I could think of there. Certainly a lot of, a lot of contact there. Yeah. You know, the final minute 49, we've talked about some of the top teams in this league. Dean, give me a dark horse. Give me a team that maybe is not right now in the top four or five, but you think it may ways down the home stretch. Well, Furman's not a dark horse, right? They're the defending champion. A Bob Ritchie coach team is going to be well prepared. 
but they're, they're, you look at the record, they're 13 and 12, and then they're 14 and 12 with the win tonight. But I think true dark horse, I think Brooks Savage at ETSU, mm -hmm. uh, they're athletic enough. They've got two rim protectors in Jaden, uh, excuse me, Jaden Parker and Jaden Seymour. Uh, if they, if you, if they can shoot it well enough, that's been their biggest issue, 40% as a team from the floor. But if they can shoot it, they can certainly defend. Uh, they can defend a team like Samford. So I think that would be the dark horse going to Asheville. I'm going to put you on the spot one last time. Let's just say Samford keeps winning games at this rate. And before you know it, they're at 26, 27 games, but they stubbed their toe in the SOCON tournament. Any chance they could get in as an at-large? You're talking to a guy who's in love with the Southern Conference. <laughs> their net sits at 64 today, so that's probably outside and at-large. As You see some guys that don't get a lot of time coming in. Maybe that was Graziano. Grazi yeah. uh, they would have 30 wins. You could make a case that they are one of the best at large potential teams, but it's unfortunate that I, I, the Southern Conference with overall 13 net conference, probably not a discussion, but boy, I, I like to play Samford in a first round in the NCAA tournament. That was the opponent. I know one thing, if they don't their toe and they do get to the NCAA tournament to go back to your point whether it's a 14 a 13 whatever the seed is I don't think anybody would want to play this Sanford squad in the first round you, you, first of all they got good players they're well coached but it's a style of play that you just don't see and you know to play 35 or so games and reach March Madness and then have to play that style against that could be really, really difficult for, for a lot of teams, especially if they're if they don't have just really good guards that can handle this pressure from the get go. It's usually even the really good teams, you can find the soft underbelly, a weakness somewhere. You've seen Sanford more than I have. I'm I'm struggling to find a weakness. Yeah, I mean, they, and they weren't at their very best tonight. Right. It's the first time you've seen them, but but you're right. I mean, you go down the list. Do they shoot it? Yes. Do they defend? Yes. Uh, do, do they run good sets and find guys and share the ball? Yes, yes, and yes. Uh, this is this is a really good basketball team that's getting ready to go to 23 and three. An unparalleled depth in this league. Yeah. Would you say? Yeah. Second free throw, knocked down for Holloway. Now the final 27 seconds here in Birmingham. Sanford on its way to its third, 23rd win of the season, 12 and 1 in conference play. Jones and Graziani, couple 5'8 guards going mano a mano at the top. And Graziani wins that one as another turnover on the wrong side of the ledger for the Catamounts. What would you expect? Anything less? Sanford, they just kept the foot on the gas right there defensively. They weren't going to allow Western any, anything easy. Final seconds will tick away. Bucky Ball on full display tonight. Bucky McMillan and Justin Gray shake hands at center court. Sanford, another one in the win column. Again, that conference mark 12-1. and 1-1 for the Sanford.